this is really fun. Uh, Mark and Ben and I co-authored a book together on Node Excel a couple years ago. We haven't been together since then, so this is fun. Um, to, to meet up with you. Uh, so I want to talk about, I guess, what can we do to empower more researchers in this area in the future? And so I frame that in thinking about um, infrastructure that we need to support computational social science and, and you know, the credibility topics that we're talking about at the core among us. So right now, what do researchers do in this space? There's, there's basically three options for collecting data from social media sources and, and analyzing it. Um, one of them is to use a, a very actively growing field of corporate tools uh, that provide social media monitoring and analytics solutions. So there's literally hundreds of these new ones drop up every week. Um, there's some big players like Datasift, and I'll talk about them a little more in a minute, that um, have exclusive agreements or almost exclusive agreements with, with places like Twitter where they get the fire hose and then they resell the data uh, to companies who can get it through their API, so programmatically. Um, and then there's other things like um, Visible does um, natural language processing and Radiant 6 kind of gives you a front end interface to monitor different hashtags that you've needed um, or, or people that you're interested in following. Um, I'm kind of curious, out of those here, has anyone used any of these kind of off-the-shelf tools for research purposes? Okay, that's my experience. <laughs> um, so what happens most of the time right now is we, we code it ourselves. So this is the technical group, which is the computer scientists who Mark calls the, uh, the programmers. Um, or we use three third-party um, tools, things like Node Excel or the Gen Lab or Gaffney if we're talking about network analysis or other tools that we're talking about um, sentiment analysis or other different things. How many of you have coded yourself? Okay, so at least half of you. How many of you use third-party? Okay, so, and, and there's people that do both, clearly, um, depending on the project. The challenge here is that you see all these different lines. Um, every time someone use, uses Node Excel to get data from Twitter, they, they, it helps them do that. So there's data importers for a bunch of different sources, um, but each person hits it again. So they're basically, you know, you're, you're kind of redoing the data collection each time. Um, or, or collecting, you know, whatever you need. Likewise, if you're writing your own uh, scripts that are accessing their API, every researcher doing that does that. If you're talking about a site like Pinterest that doesn't have an API, then you have researchers that they feel like it's ethically okay, they decide to scrape the site, even though it's against the terms of service. And so you have these kind of gray areas. Should you know, some researchers won't do that because organizations like the ACM say you shouldn't do that. Others are fine with it because they say I'm not. I'm doing it slow enough. It's not going to damage anything. Um, but the point is, right now there's no shared infrastructure where Pinterest can say, "Here, take this data. You guys figure out what to do with it." Um, instead, we have to kind of you know go and start scraping their site to collect the data, uh, even though they tell us not to. So, so these are some of the current op um, options. And there's, there's lots of problems with them. So one, there's not very much stuff in this bottom quadrant here that's free and you know, good quality third party tools. So there's now a few in the, in the um, network analysis space, but there's a ton of other spaces. And, and these are often kind of one-off solutions that last for a few years. And then, Something new comes along, and it's um, so there's not there, there's not enough tools for non-coders out there. Um, corporate tools are not really designed for research, so you, they, they're good at collecting a lot of data, but they're made for companies' marketing departments. So the um, visualizations are going to show aren't going to help us necessarily understand deep social science uh, questions. They're more going to show us, you know, who's talking about my uh, topic and how they compare, how kind of like comparing with another company. Um, there's also the duplication of effort that I, I mentioned before, which both requires lots of extra hits on, um, you know, from the company's perspective on their API, because lots of different people are, are hitting it at once, or extra work for researchers, because I have to write 
an importer that probably a hundred other people have written already. Um, and then, of course, the APIs are always changing, like Mark just said, that, you know, Twitter is going to be changing uh, very soon in a way that is going to seriously impact a lot of research. Um, and creating and maintaining third-party tools uh, that make some of this easier is not trivial. Mark spends a lot of time raising money so if we can support, you know, Node Excel and other tools like that through the Social Media Research Foundation. Um, those of us in, in academic institutions aren't really rewarded for these kinds of things. It's sort of something we do um, often because we feel it's important, but it's kind of you know written off. Um, it, it's not something you brag about necessarily in your tenure cases. Um, and then there's lots of inconsistent and, and, and challenging legal and ethical um, approaches, like I mentioned with the, the Pinterest example. So I want to think about and maybe push us to discuss what would a large scale infrastructure to support social science research look like. So NSF funds lots of different um, cyber infrastructure projects. And an example of this would be NEON or Data One. Both of these are in the field of ecology. Ecology is actually, I think, a good um, example because the tradition in ecology is that there's lots of individual researchers who go out and collect small, pretty small data sets usually um, bounded by some geographic region. And there's not really a large tradition of sharing data among them. And often when they collect data, they do it a little different. You know, different people collect it differently, and so it's hard to aggregate up from that data. Um, and so what um, happened relatively recently was the creation of this Neon Inc. Um, organization that's funded entirely by NSF. Um, and they are tasked with gathering and synthesizing data, um, providing a range of scaled data products. Now this is in ecology, but they're doing this for the next 30 years. Um, so they're putting out uh, data collection uh, places all across the US. And they're emphasizing open access approaches to data and information products that will enable scientists, educators, planners, decision makers uh, to map and understand and predict um, things in the, this ecology field. So what would it look like if we had something like this for computational social science? Um, first, I want to say, in you know, for NSF in particular, but for the rest of us, we're interested not just in building the infrastructure, but addressing the research questions in that space. And there's lots of research questions that can be addressed in this space. Um, this is, uh, I mentioned before, this is sort of the um, corporate solution to infrastructure. So companies have been struggling with the same issues. I don't want to reinvent the wheel to, you know, create a custom analytics tool for myself. And so what they've done is now they have uh, companies like Data One or, or uh, GMP or, or others. And what they what they do is they manage the data. So this is an architecture drawing of data SIP, which collects data from you know, maybe 20 or so different um, tools. And they have lots of challenges that um, they could use research to better understand. How do you deal with real-time data? How do you reduce latency? How do you do entity resolution so that you know if someone's talking about so-and-so on this platform and they're talking about it on this other platform that's actually the same person they're talking about? Um, how do you do machine learning in this kind of real-time type setting? So lots of you know, distributed computation problems. Um, a lot of things I'm not so much an expert in. Um, I'm, I'm leaning more towards the social science area, but since I'm um, heading out, I forgot to introduce myself. But, um, I'm now at Brigham Young University. I used to um, be at Maryland with, with Ben and others. I'm at Brigham Young University in an information technology program, and we have many faculty members there that you know really get into this stuff. How do how you develop the, the core infrastructure for scaling this type of analysis? And I know here, of course, there's um, expertise in that area as well. The other area that um, I think about when using data shift as an example again because I think they've done a decent job. Um, it's hard to get the user experience right for this. And so this is an example of what they call their query builder. You probably can't read all this, but basically what you can do 
with their query builder is create different streams, if you will. And so it's a visual programming language, if you will. This is creating a complex query um, by you just drag these things left and right and you choose, you know, what's my source? Oh, it's, um, you know, Bitly and what do I want to, um, what do I care about? The links between people and I, I want to filter based on some tags and I can specify those and, you know, I might want some other data. So the point is you can, um, they've tried to make a, an interface that non-coders can use and this is something we've been trying to do for Node, with Node Excel and other tools. Um, and it's not trivial. There's a lot of important work that needs to be done, um, largely in the field of human-computer interaction. Um, so what kinds of research can we do um, to support such efforts? Uh, there's lots of things related to big data. How do we handle, um, store, analyze, scale, all of this stuff? How do we do it in real time? That's a, a real challenge. It's new. Um, can we develop customized programming languages that, that make sense for researchers who are analyzing this kind of data? Um, so higher level languages that we can potentially turn into some of these other interaction tools like the Query Builder. Um, in human computer interaction, how can we use visualizations to more effectively um, you know, tell stories, gain insights, recognize patterns? Um, how can we also encourage good quality work so this is, I think, an interesting area where um, with uh, statistics, I think is an interesting example where uh, in the early days, if you were a statistician, you probably did a decent job because there were so few and you had to you know, really get your, a lot of expertise and training in that. Nowadays, you know, we, we learn some stats in high school and whatnot, but do we really know enough to do it right? I think there's an argument lots of people don't. Um, We've all probably, you know, are somewhere along that spectrum. But the point is, um, giving people sophisticated tools isn't enough if we don't guide them and help them make the right choices. And so we might think about um, how can we encourage uh, the right methods to be used. And then there's lots of uh, legal and social challenges. Um, again, there's these competing um, incentives for companies. They don't their top priority isn't necessarily research. There's uh, clearly some companies that are interested in, in social science research. So you see a division you know, within Facebook that does research, but it's also very closed. And they, you know, if you're part of the in crowd, then you can get access to the data. But if you're not, it's, um, there's really no way to get access to that data. And they also have certain projects that are prioritized over others based on um, profit motives and things, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but it just doesn't allow people with other um, core social science um, questions to, to address that. And, and then, uh, you know, the other thing is I, I think some of these companies might be willing to share data um, with the researchers, but they don't want to spend time doing it. So can we create a kind of, you know, or overarching infrastructure that includes a, a social and legal framework where companies like Pinterest could say, you figure, you know, you tell me what text I should put in my privacy policy, and you tell me, um, you know, or and you handle the data storage and providing it to other people, so these researchers aren't hitting my API and slowing down my service all the time. Uh, but I'm happy to share the data if it's, you know, anonymized in ways that you've decided that are ethically reasonable and whatnot. So, you know. Can we do that and also build a community of researchers um, within this space? So that's um, th that's basically it. And this last slide is just to show you there's lots of people talking and thinking about these issues. Um, there's uh, clearly you know this workshop and NSF in general has been supportive of, of cyber infrastructure uh, research, uh, big data initiatives. Um, the Social Media Research Foundation, there's, I don't know if you know about the, the NSF and other um, places that supported this digging into data um, initiative. And there's been reports on how do we support computational social science. Um, there's, there's good examples, so the people behind, you know, Blossom Hole, and this is where we're collecting large scale data on uh, open source projects, so who contributes to different code projects and things, and they've been making that data available to researchers in different fields. 
And then um, there's some corporate initiatives. So the Open Analytics Summit is something that I don't think researchers have participated in much, but it's kind of uh, the open source answer to all these um, companies like Datasift and whatnot. So they're saying, can we develop some open source tools that do web analytics? And, and that seems like a natural potential collaboration. Um, and then other places, so the, the Digital Societies and Social Technologies Summer Institute at Maryland this, um, this summer is um, going to have a, an emphasis in part on infrastructure to support this kind of work. There's probably lots more that we're all doing. So with, with that, I'll end. And, um, I think it'd be great to hear questions about all this.